that liberation and a spirit of liberation is developed when we go through what we go through. And we as a people must remember that we now have a spirit of liberation that bombs could not blow out, hoses could not wash out, Jim Crow could not stuck out, and dogs could not bite out. A man named Martin with a queen beside him named Coretta who had to deal with bombs in their baby's bedroom kept on marching, kept on fighting. And so we as a people developed the spirit of liberation and we must remember that it did not come easy. Somebody paid a price for us to be liberated. Also with liberation, there's also what we call confirmation. Say confirmation. confirmation. That's when God gives you a signal. That's something that those who are called by him can hear. When Moses spoke and got the people freed up, you remember not everyone wants to be free. Some are content with where they used to be. And so there was a whole lot of mumbling and grumbling that went on. Some folks broke on Moses, some went off on him. Why don't you let us alone, they asked. We were better off in Egypt. Why you got us out here? And that's a part of God's confirmation. Whenever there's mumbling and grumbling and criticism, that's just a sign that you're on the right track. Think about it. Nobody ever says anything about anyone who's not doing anything. But as soon as you have something positive, some agenda, you're trying to go, everybody got something to say, can I get a witness up in here? And that's what Dr. King had to deal with. He had many signs of confirmation. That's why he would later write in the book, The Measure of a Man. It's not where you are at moments of comfort, but where you are at moments of controversy and crisis. How do you stand when it seems like all mess is breaking out all around you? But with confirmation, there's also what we call revelation. Say revelation. revelation. That's when some of the best work is done. That's when you begin to see some things you need to see. Others look like they have lost their minds. And God will reveal to you who the weak ones are, who the ones who are not loyal, who are the ones, as James Brown used to say, are talking loud and what? Oh, yeah, y'all used to listen to some songs. You weren't always in the Gospel of America. Talking loud and saying nothing. Can you imagine? The thousands who signed up at first to join with Martin Luther King and how many left the ranks and turned back or dropped out. All of a sudden rumors went out that the FBI was after them. How many left ranks? But it was part of God's revelation that not everybody will go nor can go. But the one who is called out must never lose hope, must never lose sight of the larger picture that we as a people will get to the promised land. And so after remembrance, it's time to act. Do not stay in the past too long. It connects us, but it also affects us. Moses, don't come crying to me. The front line is not for wimps, but it's for warriors. I want you to turn and ask somebody beside you, are you a wimp or are you a warrior? God says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And you must act when your steps have been ordered by the Lord. God said to Moses, tell the people to go forward. Yeah. Yes, there's a Red Sea in front of them, and there's wilderness all around them, and it seems like they're between a rock and a hard place, but tell them it's time to act. They must move, and they must go forward. And that's right where we are today. Sometimes it seems like the strides that have been made are vanishing. Mm -hmm. But God is still whispering, as Aretha Franklin used to say, sacred secrets in our ears and reminding us that Martin Luther King Jr. did his part, Coretta Scott King Jr. did her part, and God has done God's part, but we must do our part. It takes courage, yes. It takes sacrifice, yes. It takes movement, yes. But we must go forward. How do we go? We first must go forward with the confidence that God is with us. Yeah. Go on with the fact that our daughters and our daughters' daughters have to stop killing the babies that are in their wombs. We must go forward knowing that economic, racial, and housing equity will not be given unless we're willing to fight for it. Injustice is still injustice, and even though Jim Crow has died, a more senior form has come, James Crow Esquire. But if we do not act, who will take us forward? And so when Moses and the people of God got to the other side of the Red Sea. After the liberation and the revelation and the confirmation, they had cause for celebration. Say celebration. celebration. I had the privilege of going to South Africa at the end of my White House Fellowship where I met Abel Ryan. At the end of 93, 94, Nelson Mandela had just become president. 
I could not march with Martin. I remembered it, but I was not an adult. So I said, if I could just be with Nelson Mandela, this will be a highlight of my life. And so the two great leaders of our time, Bishop Desmond Tutu and Nelson Mandela, were over there. We had this White House fellowship experience. They said, you can go anywhere in the country. I said, if we can just go to South Africa. We lobbied the 14 people in our group, and I said, look, this is a major time in history. Let's go. We all voted to go and went to South Africa. 14-day trip, red carpet treatment, White House. And so we got there 13 days, we saw the shanty towns, we saw where they hung out, we saw where people had been in prison, we saw Robin's Island, we saw where Winnie lived. I said, I just want to meet Nelson Mandela. It was day number 14, when we get ready to go to the airport, I, they said, I think Mandela's going to be in an auditorium before we get to the airport. Everybody put your luggage on board and let's get on the bus. Guess who was the first one on the bus? Yeah, yeah, I was the first one. I said, just a chance to see Nelson Mandela. Now here on this side of the shores, people are kind of low key about dancing, but in Africa, they dance for everything. Oh yeah, they understand that we are from God and every part of us moves. Let everything that has breath, your arms, your fingers, let everything that has breath give praise to the Lord. And so we went into this auditorium about the size of this crack auditorium. And we got there and we were sitting in our seats like you were sitting in your seats, waiting with anticipation for whatever was gonna happen. On the stage was this wonderful African choir. The sisters were dressed in their wonderful dresses and their heads were wrapped in gay lace that matched the prints of their dresses. And as they sang, they began to move. Beside them were the brothers. They had their boobas on. All the brothers were looking strong, but they too were not ashamed of who they were, and they began to move with the sisters. And so here we have this African choir doing this dance called the Toy Toy. The 12 different dialects in South Africa. I couldn't understand any one of them, but I was in row three. I was like, hey, don't leave me out, hey. And the drums were beating, I was like, party over here, party over there. Yeah, I'm from New York, you know, I was here, here. So they called out from stage right, Nelson Mandela, the president. He tried to stand really erect by his British influence, but then the music got to him. He said, hey, seek a lele, seek a lele. I said, seek a lele, Mr. President. Yeah. <laughs> then they called out Bishop Desmond Tutu stage left. I said, I know the bishop's not going to dance. No, they don't dance in the church. He said, hey, don't leave me out. You know, he's kind of short, you know. He did a break dance with his and did a twirl. So we had the choir and the president and the bishop all doing this dance called the Toy Toy. Why were they doing it? Because it was their celebration dance. It was their freedom dance. They, their bodies were expressing what their spirits were feeling. Once we were down, but now we're up. Once I was a prisoner, but now I'm president. Hey, that's something to dance for. And that's why we come to celebrate the life of Dr. King. Once we were in the fields, but now we are in the fields. We thank God for the life of Dr. Martin Luther King. We thank God for the life of Coretta Scott King. We thank God that he sent a man to make a difference. But the question is, what difference will your life make? Let every day count. Don't just count the days, but count what you want to do with the day the Lord has placed in your hand. Make a difference. We are strengthened by our struggles. Amen. Amen.